Shalom, everybody. Let's start this off with a blast. It is Yom Teruah. It is Rosh Chodesh. Poochies love Yom Teruah as well as they shout to our Heavenly Father out. Hallelujah. Hello, Poochie. I know you love Yom Teruah. I know she does. They both do. The other one's down on the ground. That's Kiva. The other one's Dia. Okay, baby girl. Don't want you to fall. So, as I have said, it is both. And of course it is, because this is how you begin. Yom Teruah is the Rosh Hodesh. Um, I know there are some out there that'll tell you that's not true. They use the, the witch's moon or the dark moon, um, which we know astrology is actually where that derived from. The dark moon, of course, all of scripture describes, uh, the dark moon is not a moon, there is no moon in a dark moon. So if you listen to scripture, if you believe man, of course, the dark moon is the new moon. If you believe the witches and you believe paganism, then yes, it is. But it's not. In all of scripture, dating far back, we have evidence dating three, four thousand years ago, not to mention, of course, we have the word of Yahuwah. The word of Yahuwah comes first. So we know the Rosh Hodesh, which means the head of the renewed or the head of the moon or the head of the month. That means the beginning of the start of this. So it's the beginning of the month or it's the head of the month that's starting. So we have a new month that started. So that word, and I know some say, oh, Yariak, but don't forget, this is Hebrew. We have many ways of describing everything, and everything has to do with an action or what it is or what it does. Now, Hodesh, it comes from Hadash. Some may say Hadash, but Hadash, which is talking about a renewed or renewing or a cutting. It also is talking about the edge of a sword. It is talking about the polishing or the shining of the edge of the sword. Now this is uh, talking about the cutting of the edge of the sword or recutting the edge of the sword so that it's sharp as, it, as you begin to take it out into the field to reap your fields. It also has something, and they use it in Yirmiyahu, talking about how he would, uh, he would cut or he would have a, uh, a hadash agreement, a Brit, with the people of Yisrael. Now in here, he's talking about a, not a brand new thing that's never been heard of, but a renewed, and it's new to some of us, because there are things in it that was never in it before, because of Messiah. So they had the expectation and hope. So the Hadash, the polished edge of the sword, the renewing of the sword, we also have to remember the symbolism in the two uh, gadol, that is the two great lights. They're both called gadol in Hebrew. Gadol means great. And then you have the lesser and the greater. Now the lesser, you hearken back to the symbolism here, the imagery that we're getting here is you have the eternal light, the great light, and that's the sun. That's the S-U-N, I mean, which is a kind of an allusion to the father then the lesser light which he brought forth which even yahushua said the father is greater than all he is greater than i so we have that illusion yahushua had to come to do what to cut this new oath this new agreement with us it is renewed for 
Yisrael, who had been divorced and had broken the agreement, and now, because of his death and resurrection, there's a, a marriage agreement can be reestablished, but now there are some new terms in it. Those terms are you and I to be grafted in. This was always told to be the case, but this is beautiful symbolism as we celebrate Yom Turah and we understand that he will come with the last trumpet at the shout and that we will see him in all of his esteem and all of his honor, that we will all see him. So we understand that Yahusha being that lesser light, being renewed in the world, renewed to the world, that as he comes, that glimmer of hope, that shimmering, shining light. And I understand there's a lot of you that say, no, I believe it's this and I believe it's that. And that's fine. You can believe what you want. I'm not going to tell you how to believe. I'm just telling you what scripture says and what all of history says. We have thousands of years of history. Even their enemies speak of them keeping it a reb to a reb, which is evening to evening. They speak of them keeping it by the sliver. Now, I know that's a symbol of Islam. That's what, 639 when Islam came to be? Let's not forget, do a little little digging into Muhammad. Muhammad and the Muhammadins. Muhammad actually loved the Jewish people at first, the Yahudi in that land, because he understood that he was from Ishmael and that they were his brethren. So he went to them, seeking them to say, I am a Nabi, what we've renamed after the Greek term for soothsayer, prophet. We... He said, I am a Nabi, and I have the Nabiya, Naba, or the Nabiot. And they said, we know our Nabi. You are not one. And they rejected him, and they turned him away. And because of this, he swore to destroy them. Now, mind you, if you've read any of the Quran, the Hadith, any of these things, you understand that many of the things that are in it, the surahs and everything, are reflective of what is in Torah and the Tanakh and all of the writings that he borrowed all of that from there. And then there's also, you can look at the Catholic Church's influence as well and understand what this means. Now, there are some people out there with doctorate degrees and they say they're experts in language. They don't even agree. And I'm telling you, the foremost linguist in the world today is the professor Stephen Fassberg over at the, uh, uh, the Hebrew Institute in, in Jerusalem or Jerusalem today, Jerusalem University. He is the chair and he is widely considered by all academia. And I mean all. I'm not talking about these guys with YouTube channels that say they know and they went to this university and went to that and it's this and it's that. He is the foremost leading in all of Shemitic languages and even the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's nobody who is more of an expert. He is considered by every major university in the world to be the leading foremost expert. So all of these people out there that tell you that they, they're experts and they've researched this and then because they have a doctorate next to their name, so what? I went to college too. I went through the indoctrination process myself. Let me tell you what, the studies that I have done into, into the Abrit language, the ancient Hebrew and the ancient Yisraelites and all of their surrounding people, all of the remaining history of all the people, this is not a mystery and it was not hidden. The only time that it was hidden or taken away from them is during their time in captivity when they were in Misraim. Misraim, today's Egypt. This is when it was taken away. Since then, he said, I would leave a remnant in the land. He left them in all over sub-Saharan Africa. They were in Yemen. They were in Ethiopia. They're in Egypt. They were in Iran, Saudi Arabia, Turkey. All over, there was a remnant that never stopped, ever stopped doing this for the 3,000 years, even in the time of Mashiach. And if Mashiach had seen them doing it wrong to you, don't you think he would have mentioned it? The fact is, is they left a remnant in the land and then he scattered many all over. 
but they never stopped keeping their customs. They did let other things blend in, believe me, but they never stopped keeping what they've always been told to keep. We have to get to our heads that not everybody over there in that land today is from Europe. Most of those people never left that area, never left Turkey or Yemen or Iran or Ethiopia or any of those places. They never left to any of those places. They ended up coming back into the land when they were being persecuted. So just because somebody stole a symbol from Yah, it's because somebody stole the crescent moon doesn't mean it's not valid. All of scripture talks about it. It is not even up for debate at this point, but we keep trying to change it. So today on the Rosh Hadesh, on that renewed covenant cutting of a new Brit, which is Messiah, when the moon, when it was darkest and through our dark period, and here comes in the Messiah. The Messiah comes in and he cuts the new oath, that new agreement with us. On Yom Teruah, it'll be the fulfillment of all of the prophecy of his return for a thousand year reign. If that's not enough, to make you stand up and shout and blow the shofar and say, Hallelujah, Hua, thank you so much, Yah. What is? We see this time. He tells us to be not caught off guard. And he tells us we won't. We do not know the hour or the day, which is in regards to we don't know when the crescent, that new sliver, that polished edge, that renewed edge of the light even says it in Hanuk that as the moon receives its light back into it, that begins the month. We see it throughout all scripture. We see it all over the place that we know that when it receives that light back in, it begins something, something new. We know it's not the dark because the dark could be between one and a half to, to three days, depending. We see it when they were coming out. When it was dark, when he darkened the moon, he says, with this will be the sign for you. And he tells them that. He tells them it is the Rosh Chodesh in, in Exodus. As they come out, he tells them that this sign after the three days of darkness, the moon was dark for three days. And the new sign for them for their new month, the month of Abib for the Pesach was that sliver, was that beginning their count, was that renewed light entering back into the lesser light the lesser light a reflection of yahusha who receives all of his esteem from his father he is filled with the light as he grows and grows and grows inside our hearts we are filled with the light of yahuwah as well as we receive that light of yahusha in our darkness hallelujah blow the trumpets blow your shofar Hallelujah. And know today is that day to celebrate. For how much longer do we have before we will see the Messiah coming back fully in all of his esteem, honored by his father to reign for that thousand years. Hallelujah, brethren. We love you. We hope you have an excellent day just praising and blowing the shofar. And don't forget, it is a Kodesh Mikra. So that is, it is a Kodesh, a set-apart gathering with the brethren to celebrate this day. So eat, drink, and be merry in Yahuwah, for it is a great day. And praise the Lamb, for he is worthy to be praised, for this is a reflection of his day and his coming and our eternal deliverance from this world. Hallelujah. Thank you. We love you. We'll talk to you soon.